Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. There's a National Butterfly Center. It is located in Mission, Texas, and it apparently is quite a thing. They have more than 240 different species of butterflies, including the threatened monarch, which we've talked about on the show, obviously, and the imperiled Manfreda giant skipper. All of those call the sanctuary uh, their home. And uh, I don't know what an imperiled Manafrida giant skipper is, but it certainly sounds interesting. It sounds like it'd be delightful to go to this place and see it. And uh, the reason they have this uh, incredibly diverse range of butterflies is because they've worked at it for a long time. The National Butterfly Center's conservationists earned the title by deliberately populating the 100 acre facility with a range of plants that specific breeds of caterpillars uh, feed on. And it's not easy to do this. That is why this particular conservation center in Mission, Texas, an area, it's one of the the poorest areas in America actually, has tourists coming from all over the continent because of the great work that they've put in. Unfortunately, that work and the center might not be here for much longer if the Trump administration has anything to say about it. Because the border wall could end up destroying a vast percent or possibly the entirety of the center. Construction of the wall is expected to begin in February through the 100 acre habitat. And the government sent the center a letter telling them what they can expect when construction starts in just a couple of months. Um, And the officials at the center interpret the government's uh, announcement letter to mean that the wall that's gonna be going through this butterfly conservation center will be as high as 36 feet with gates at least 18 feet wide and 20 feet wide to accommodate vehicles. So a massive high wall, gigantic uh, gates, roads running through it. What effect does this have on the delicate biological system that they have set up there? Uh, I don't know, I will leave it to them to explain it, but it is worrisome. The letter that they sent, the accompanying maps outlined a 150 foot wide enforcement zone south of the wall where all vegetation will be cleared. All of that vegetation that has been carefully cultivated and curated from around the world so that specific caterpillars will come and feed in it, so that specific butterflies will eventually go through the area, is going to be pulled out of the ground to make way for an enforcement zone so that nobody can get close to that wall. And the thing is, it possibly goes worse than that. The proposed route would put 70% of the habitat on the side of the wall facing Mexico. So it would technically still be US land, but you wouldn't be able to just casually go over there if you want. And again, that's the majority of the entire center. And the center said that the government hasn't yet indicated whether that land would be accessible once the project is completed or what kind of damage the habitat might suffer during construction. And look, it is possible that the people constructing the wall, those who are planning this, are really thinking about the effect it'll have on the butterflies and conservation centers and things like that. That is possible. But it also seems unlikely. It seems like they're going to want to have sight lines from that wall. They're gonna wanna make sure that nobody can get close to it easily. And to do that, they're probably going to tear out all of that vegetation. And now right now, I mean, you might wanna go if you're in the Texas area and you wanna see it as a lot of tourists do, you might wanna go now. The president of the North American Butterfly Association says, on a good day, you can see a cloud of 200,000 butterflies. And they say that it's like something out of a movie because when you're walking around, you have to keep your mouth closed so that you accidentally won't suck a butterfly in. That's how thick they are in the air, at least until now. And that's what we get, not only with our approach to the climate as we talked about previously, but the way that we approach nature generally. Thankfully, environmentalists over the past few years have been raising a lot of concerns about the wall, not just for the reasons that we talk about most the effect it has on immigration, the message that it sends to the rest of the world, the huge expense, you know, how difficult it'll be to construct, the waste of money that it represents, all of that. But also that in many places, whether in mission or elsewhere, it is gonna be cutting across uh, the, the habitats of different animals. It's gonna be making it so that they can't move from one area to another, either to chase food or naturally as the seasons change. All of this has been well known for a long, long time, long before this new push for the wall. But the wall is still likely to be built, especially if the Democrats capitulate and give them the $1.6 billion that Chuck Schumer up to about a week ago was considering giving them. And as a sort of added bonus, you not only lose the butterflies, but Mission Texas, which as I said, is in one of the counties in Texas that is the poorest, that most needs the money, 
earns millions of dollars every year in tourism dollars for people going to this center. And that could be completely annihilated over the course of the next year as well. So if you live in Mission, you too could end up being hurt at the same time that the butterfly populations are being devastated. And so again, I apologize if this seems a bit esoteric, a bit specific, but these sorts of small level things, the throwaway stories that you see in one outlet and then it's gone, I mean, that shapes an area, that shapes a town theoretically. This is one of the most diverse habitats for butterflies anywhere in America, and it could soon be gone. And the butterflies themselves could soon be wiped out. If we don't change our approach to things like pesticides, moving into the areas where they live and developing there, and of course emitting so much carbon that it literally is too hot for these animals to continue to live where they traditionally have. These sorts of extinctions do happen. I'm not pretending that, um, that the earth has never seen it, but generally it doesn't happen on the, on the time frame of a couple of decades, or in the case of this last story, a single year. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.